Rural Vermonter with the Rural Vermont Police. You know why I stopped you today, sir? Blinkers out? Yeah, can I get that license and registration? Oh, no! We got a runner, boys. You're under arrest, sir. Damn. I'll let him off easy with a warning. Damn hooligans here. So as you might be able to tell, I'm once again at the Thomas Hershack family auction where I made this new purchase. A 2014 old police charger. I paid $4,700 for it. It's a 2014 with 83,000 miles. And it's, to me, per like, from what I could see so far, in pretty much perfect condition. Other than some minor body dings from the old siren or light bar here, and then the antenna back here, there's not a speck of rust on it. No lights on the dash. It seemed to do donuts just fine, too. This was from the South Burlington Police Department, so they have the snow tires on it. It's snow season. I guess she's locked up right now. Some bird poop there. No rust on the inner fender. Back seat, which probably has a lot of old barf in it from the Burlington College students. And a light that still works. So I can scare some hooligans like Carl with it. This bad Mamma Jam has only got the V6 in it. Doesn't have the Hemi. If it did, it would go for like 9,000 rather than 4,700. We'll take a look at the interior. It's 2014, like I said, which it looks older on the outside because it's still the old body style, but once you get to the inside, it actually starts looking like a 2014. Of course, here was the old console for the police unit or whatever they used. Starter up. Like I said, only 83,000 miles on it. No lights on the dash. Inspected till next year. What more could you want for less than five grand? Now these chargers go for a lot of money because people really want them. For example, the KBB on this exact model is 9,300 in good condition and about 8,900 in fair condition. This one's in very good condition, but since it was an old police car, of course there's gonna be some issues with it. You know, you don't know how long it's been idled, although it runs really smoothly, listen up. So we'll go ahead and drive it home, see how it drives, and maybe I'll go arrest some of my friends and see how they Take it. Before we get going, I noticed some interesting things that I'm sure all of you are interested in. That's how many idle hours there are, which is a lot. A lot of idle hours. But running good and oil pressure is good. So it seems like the engine is in good shape. Total engine hours, a lot. <laughs> a lot of them. And that's about it. And we're gonna see. How she goes. <sighs> this is crazy. This little tiny screen here is a touch screen, which you would not expect. Anyways, on the road. Well, one thing I noticed is the climate control is stuck on heat only. Even if I have it as cold as possible, it's still blowing off oh, just hot air. So I don't know what that is, but something, maybe an actuator somewhere. All right, on-ramp, here we go. Pedal to the metal. Ooh, gee. Ooh. Okay. That was way faster than I thought it would be. 
Holy cow. V6? Charger actually moves. Drive's really nice. Everything's quiet. Steering wheel stays straight with no hands on it. Feels like it's real tight and everything's good. Decent acceleration. No doubt about it. So I've had it for a little while. I've been driving it kind of like a maniac, so I'm only getting 20 miles per gallon, but I'm sure I'm sure it wouldn't be hard to get 30 in this thing if you drove highway or whatnot. What's also nice is the climate control fixed itself, and I don't know how that happened because I didn't do anything to it, but it, it magically is working again, and I'm not complaining. This little tiny screen here is actually a touchscreen, which is pretty funny because it's so small that you wouldn't expect it to be a touchscreen. Huh, so that's kind of cool. So I'm not totally certain what I want to do to this car yet. There's some things that would be fun if I find the time, but it was just a super cool snag and I had to grab it, so I'm happy about it. So if you have any ideas about what to do with this charger, let me know in the comments. Right now I'm just going to give you a quick update on some other things, some other vehicles that I have. So after I finished the uh, 1998 GMC that the new tranny was put into, uh, it took several months, but got it all ready, good drivable. After that was all set, said and done, I even traded it for this Saab. So you can, whether it was a good deal or not, you can write in the comments, but I think it was a great deal because this Saab is, is clean as a bean, low mileage, and really has nothing wrong with it. I did have to put new tires on it. So these are four brand new tires, all four together mounted and installed was $400. Crazy cheap price total. Here's the underside. There's no rust on it. I don't know if they didn't drive it in the winter or if it was a summer car or if Saab is really good at undercoating, but those are those are fuel lines and there's not even rust on that. That's where the exhaust comes out. So it does not have the rear muffler. Uh, looks like it was just saws all off by the previous owner to make it louder. I'll go ahead and fire this cool cucumber up for you. Interior here. Ugh. 154,000 on it. Haven't started this in a long time, so let's see how it does. Still not an issue. Runs so good. It does have an engine light on for an EVAP leak, of course. But it seems like it runs good. This will be a fun summer car. You put the top down, cruise around. Seems nice. These interiors remind me a lot of the Volvos from the same era. Very similar. Kind of luxury ski bum car, you know, but they're great. I like them. Interior definitely, definitely needs a big old deep clean. Yeah, this is the Saab. And to finish rattling it off quickly, still have that truck, use it often. This dump truck, still use it often. Have it, of course. That's the charger. Uh, and then big blue here, still the daily driver. Of course, Toad has been put away for the season. I just got blue undercoated again. Uh, this time I used wool wax, keeping her fresh and clean. A little dirty right now. To all those concerned, it is extremely undercoated. Rust isn't getting on it for a couple of years. But a small disaster did happen when I was towing my tractor one day. I blew up, the tire in the rear just exploded and look what it did. It bent up my bed here. It bent up this uh, sport rod, whatever it is. This is the airline to the airbag, broke that. Uh, it greatly bent up my exhaust pipe and I had to cut it off because the exhaust pipe was spitting smoke r out right into the bedside here. And it was spitting so much out and so hot that it actually discolored it a little there. That's a little bit of a disaster. Bent up the running board, took out, ripped all, this was, a, this was another one of those supports, ripped it all the way out of the sheet metal there. Uh, it was a support from here to there and it did rip that all the way out. So that was a big disaster. That happened several months ago and I was just so sad about it that I never did a video on it. Uh, if you stand 10 feet away, you can't tell that much, but I definitely need to redo 
the running board there. As Jeep says, they're not scratches, they're memories. Well, that one's a bit of a painful memory, but it's there. Anyways, that's that update complete. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you soon when I get back to another video.